Hey, good morning. It's Greg. My name is Greg Belser. This is Advent 2022. We are working our way through a devotional guide that our church has prepared called Let Earth Receive Her King. And today we are on day 18 and our devotion has been authored by Dr. Jerry Rankin. We love Dr. Rankin. He and his wife, Bobby, are uh, very faithful members of our church. We're grateful for them. Uh, Dr. Rankin, of course, the retired president of the International Mission Board. And uh, it's no small thing to uh, hang around Dr. Rankin and enjoy uh, the many years of experience and wisdom that God has given him. So he will provide our devotional thoughts momentarily. First, we'll read Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who's been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, quote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel, unquote. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way and behold the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gold, pardon me, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. So here are Dr. Rankin's thoughts on this passage. There's a great deal of obscurity and intrigue in the narrative of these magi from the East who are sometimes even referred to as kings. They were not Jews, but as scholars and astrologers, they must have been acquainted with the Jewish scriptures and prophecies. Where did they get the idea that a star would indicate the fulfillment of a coming king? How could they comprehend that this king would not be revealed by ascending to the throne of a prominent kingdom, uh, but as a baby born in humble surroundings? The Jews, who had all the knowledge of a coming Messiah, did not recognize Christ nor accept him, even after a life of miracles and teachings that testified to his divine identity. John 1.11 says, quote, he who came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, unquote. Yet there were foreigners who made a long perilous journey to find him and recognized that this baby was worthy of worship, God himself who had come into the world. Certainly being rewarded with finding the object of their search in a remote village after their travel over inhospitable terrain and the deception and conspiracy of Herod brought great joy to them. In fact, Matthew 2.10 expresses this with a double superlative, quote, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, close quote. Note their joy did not come when they arrived at their destination, but when the star appeared before them. Apparently, the star was not a constant guide on their journey. Why did they rejoice? Because it was the star that would lead them to Jesus. Could this not be a metaphor for what led you to know Jesus? Was that star godly parents who led you to trust him as your savior? Perhaps it was a convicting sermon that resulted in your abandoning a self-centered life and pursuit of worldly values to discover an eternal hope when you found Christ. God is still providing a star, his divine leading to guide us to Christ. When we go through trials, doubts, or discouragement, he will always use something to lead us back to Jesus. He is the answer. Indeed he is. Thank you, Jerry, for that. 
uh, devotional this morning. We're grateful. I would uh, commend to you an awareness that uh, God from the beginning is leading people to Jesus. And he does so in ways we understand, ways we can forecast perhaps, and then in many ways that we cannot. We have no way to explain. So no matter how God has led you or God is leading you, I hope today you see the hand of the Lord in your life in the past and in the present and trust that he will continue to lead you to Christ. And if you are here today uh, considering this devotional, I pray that you would worship Christ and he would be indeed the savior of your own heart and life. May God give you grace in that. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for the grace you've given to lead us to see Jesus. You didn't do that for us with a star. You certainly did that with the wise men, the Magi of Matthew 2. But you, as Dr. Rankin has reminded us this morning, uh, uh, still lead people to Jesus in a variety of ways. And we're thankful. We pray that as we reflect on that, we will be driven to even greater worship of you, gratitude and thanksgiving for what you've done. Thank you for the coming of Christ and for the coming again that will soon happen. We love you and we thank you for your mercies today. In Christ's name, amen. Well, I hope you have a good day. Enjoy this Advent season.